Welcome to the next video in the series where we're going to look at adding threading to the server that we've already developed. So the threading is mentioned here in the assignment which is step 6. Upgrade your server to include handling of multiple threads so concurrent inquiries from multiple clients is possible. So that's what we're going to look at here and this is to remind you that there was a, a couple of slides about the programming for threading in um, the original lecture that you can look at and also in the reading list when you first learnt programming, programming 101, there were various books and um, I'm going to be using one of these books, uh, the Dital and Dital book, uh, is also useful. There is also other useful information on um, some web pages. So I like this one by albahari.com. Joseph Albahari has uh, a book on programming in C Sharp and he's got a very nice chapter on threading in C Sharp that I find useful. So those are some resource materials that you can use to start your programming. So what we then need to do is uh, go into uh, Visual Studio and fi find uh, open a project, a recent project which is our server. So here's the code for our server and the unthreaded version so we now need to make a threaded version. So we need to tell Visual SVN that we're planning to start a new update for this. That allows us to undo any changes if we make any mistakes. So what we've got is our main program which calls run server and then run server goes round and round and it's for and uh, we call do request for each one. So what we need to do is change this so that each do request could happen concurrently in a thread. One of the easiest way, easier ways of achieving this is uh, for example and we close off the other class here. So we've got a, a new class called Handler that just contains uh, this do request. The other thing that we need to change is instead of making it static we can make it public because it's going to be uh, rather dynamic. The other thing that's going to be useful to do here. So is, um, is to move several of the other things that happen in that loop actually into do requests. That'll probably make it a bit better. So for example we can move the socket stream and this printing out of, of connection received we can put into the um, do request method so we can move and uh, we can also and uh, we can put in here we can just pass the connection. It's just reduce all the amount of stuff that's done in the main program and moving more work to the thread. So this can go at the bottom here. And we can do finally we can paste that in there.
So now we've received a connection and we can create the sockets from in there. So we've just moved a little piece of code. From here now we've got to make it threaded with access to the handle at last. We could call it um, request handler. And then <coughs> we can make a new one of those. Once we've got a connection, we can make, we can say, quest hand the equals new. Now that dynamically makes a new copy of this class containing the do request. And then we want uh, to declare a thread. So then we can declare a thread. Say, and we call it say t and we can make that as a new thread and then we can use the lambda expression to say that we want to call the request and the dynamic one that we've made, uh, we call its method do request in the land of expression. And then, so that's declared what the thread is going to be. Oh, so it's, it can't find thread because we haven't put the uh, using system dot ready in there so that it, it tells it the um, thread so we've made a new thread and uh, we can just start that thread so there we are We've got the main which calls the run server. The run server creates dynamically a new copy of the do request, a new instance of the do request method, class and method, and then it creates a thread for that which it then starts. So that's most of the activity there for the thing. So we can save that and we can build that solution. So it's built OK. So we can do some basic tests for that. So the first thing we can do is now start the server listening and then we can go to our command prompt for our client and just check that it works. So do we connect slash n to connect slash e that works to connect slash k type type that appears to work and do a connect slash s and that appears to work So how can we show it's multi-threaded? It does appear to be working. Well, we can create another command prompt. And so here we've got another command prompt in the connect directory. So we could do a connect slash s here. And that's running something. And we could do a connect slash s here. And so now our server is, is effectively talking 
to two different clients simultaneously. And I could do a connect slash e hello in one of them and it could give a hello response while the other one is still sending out some data. So we can sh show using this little technique that it does appear to be doing something concurrently with some very small changes to our server. So the last thing is to run our tests. The um, location for the server. Two for one. Respond. Respond. In debug. Now well, it's passed all our tests of threading with 10 threads or even a thousand concurrent threads. And uh, so there we are, the threaded concurrent server does appear.